Hey, y'all, we're going to go ahead and get started and folks can um, join us as they come in. Um, first of all, I just want to um, welcome you to uh, making connections, what you need to know about the election. And we're going to have a quick uh, Spanish language interpretation um, uh, announcement as well. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I, I hope that most of you are familiar with us at the Budget and Tax Center. Uh, we are a group that um, where we envision a state where every person can reach their full potential and achieve well-being through the support of trustworthy anti-racist institutions and systems that we all participate in building. Um, and let me just do a few introductions. First of all, I'm Mel Umbarger. I am just going to be sort of a facilitator today. Um, we have with us today Marcus Thompson, who is the organizing director with the Democracy NC. We have Heba Atwa, who is our Legislative Advocacy and Campaigns Manager here at the Budget and Tax Center. And we have Celine Santiago Lopez, who is our Community Building Intern here at the Budget and Tax Center. Um, and they'll be uh, sharing information with you on uh, several things today. And what we're gonna be talking about today includes uh, this agenda. We're gonna be talking about voting rights, some important deadlines, making sure how you have a voting plan and how to Make sure you and your family and friends and everybody else you know has a voting plan so they can get to where they need to go to vote. We're going to be talking about some of the updates around Western NC and, and the voting issues around that. We'll be going through uh, a brief introduction to a nonpartisan candidate guide from Democracy NC. And we're going to be going through a brief introduction to our policy, our election guide to policies um, that we've put together here at the Budget and Tax Center. We're going to be having some questions and answers, and we're also going to be taking some actions together today. So that being said, let's go vote. I am going to turn it over to Marcus. All right. Thank you so much for, for having me. So first, we want to make sure that we ground people in your rights to vote. So you have the right to vote if you are able to be in line on by 7.30 p.m. on election day. So regardless of how long you stay in the line after that, if you're in line by 730, you have the right to vote. You also have the right to vote with or without a, a photo ID. Um, there is a form called an ID exception form that you can ask for. So for some reason, if you are not able to present an ID, you lost it or you haven't had time to get one, or there, is a, there are various reasons on the form, you can request this form. Uh, sign a, uh, basically an affidavit saying that this is the reason why you don't have ID, check the box of the reason, and you should be allowed to vote. Also, you have the right to vote with a provisional ballot. So in this, any situation in which, in which uh, there is something wrong with your ability to vote, so if you're told you're at the wrong polling place or you're, they can't find you on the roads or something like that, you still have the right to vote. They should give you a provisional ballot or you can request one if they don't give you the option, if they, but they should give you the option to vote with a provisional ballot. And, uh, and if uh, you can meet certain deadlines, uh, certain qualifications or whatever, that vote can count. So no matter what happens, you wanna vote, whether it be the regular voting or if something's wrong, you can vote provisionally, but, but always make sure you vote uh, when you get a chance to go to the polls. Also name change, you have the right to vote if you're even if your name has changed and you have not alerted the um, election officials. So, for example, if you register to vote but you got married and you have not and your name changed, uh, you can still vote in that situation. If you've moved, you have the right to vote. So, if you've been uh, in the state for more than 25 days, uh, you can go. You need to go ahead and register uh, to vote in a new. Uh, location if you moved out of the county, but if you move um, in within a county within 30 days, you can uh, vote at your old uh, location. But if it's more than that, then you would need to, to register at the new place. But the point of it is, if you have moved, you still have the right to vote. You just need to vote early and let people know what your new address is if you're out of those uh, 30 day thresholds. Justice involved people can also have the right to vote. So if you have a misdemeanor, if you are convicted of a misdemeanor, you do not lose your right to vote. You can continue to vote uh, regardless. However, if you are convicted of felony, you do lose your right to vote until you have 
uh, completed your sentence and any kind of fees and or probation that uh, comes with with that sentence. Once that all that has been done, you have the right to register once again and to uh, be able to vote once again. And lastly, but not least, uh, you have the right to vote without intimidation. So uh, no one has the right to intimidate you as you're trying to vote or to, to make you feel threatened or in danger uh, when it comes to, to your right to vote. So we want to kind of ground you into these things, uh, these rights that you have to vote. Also, you have the right to vote when it comes to uh, accessibility. So curbside voting, it's for voters who are unable to enter the voting place without physical assistance. So if for any reason, or if you have COVID, you can't, if you can't walk into the polling place or if you have COVID or something like that, then you have the right to vote curbside. You also, uh, if you have a physical disability and you're unable to mark a ballot without help, you have the right to ask for assistance by a relative or someone that you designate to help you if say if you are, are blind or if you are illiterate, which are the, the things that we have here, you have the, the right to get assistance to vote. Um, so now um, we're gonna talk about some key deadlines coming up this year when it comes to uh, our election. So a very important deadline that we're coming quickly on Friday, October the 11th is the regular voter registration deadline. That's at 5 p.m. So any voter registrations need to, that all that has to happen before five o'clock um, on Friday. So any, if someone were to register by paper or register online, they would need to, to get that to the Board of Elections by 5 p.m. on Friday. Um, of course, if you do it online, it's automatic, but you wanna get that registration done by 5 p.m. On, on Friday. Now. Thursday, October 17th is the first day of what we call early voting, in-person uh, early voting. And so um, if you say, for instance, if you miss that deadline on uh, the 11th, you can register and vote at the same time, Thursday, October the 17th, all the way through it, uh, as you'll see, November the 2nd. So that is your early, the beginning of your early voting period. Tuesday, October 29th, that is the deadline for absentee ballot requests. So you need to get those to the Board of Elections by 5 p.m. Tuesday, October 29th. And we have just a few more deadlines on the next slide. Um, so I mentioned previously Saturday, November 2nd, that's the last day of early voting. That uh, is from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Again, you can register and vote on that same day. Tuesday, November 5th is a very important day. That's our election day. And so you can vote from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Again, you cannot register and vote on the election day. So that's why you would have to pre-register. You would have to have registered by October the 11th if you're gonna vote on election day. Uh, also, Tuesday, November the 5th, that's the last day for absentee ballots to be received to the Board of Elections, they must be received by that same 7.30 deadline on November the 5th. So those are key dates and deadlines that we want you to be aware of when it comes to this election. Now, North Carolina has a one-stop shop for voters. That's ncvoter.org. And there you can get many plans and information about how to vote. So if you wanna vote during early voting, or vote by mail or vote on election day, however you want to vote, you can uh, find out information about how to do that at ncvoter.org. So in this uh, slide I just have here, you can click on the menu and you'll see a drop down box that says how to vote. And then it would give you, after you click on that, it will drop down these three options to get more information about, about voting early by mail or on election day. Um, at NC Voter, you can look up where your early voting locations are. You can get the steps to vote by mail. You can get the um, absentee request form. You can actually fill that out online. And you can get your polling places for election day. Again, all of this is found at ncvoter.org. Uh, and if you have any trouble voting, you also we also have a hotline that's available for you. So 888-OUR-VOTE is a hotline. So if you find yourself 
in the situation that I talked about before where someone says you're at the wrong precinct or they can't find you on the voting rolls or whatever, maybe there's some intimidation, any trouble that you have voting, let us know at 888 our vote. We have lawyers and election officials that are standing by to answer any questions you may have or to direct you in, in situations like that. We also have relationships with boards with the state board of elections and local boards of elections. So whatever is happening, you give us a call, we can either call and, and talk to the people locally or at the state level, whatever needs to happen, we have people in place to help you to be able to make sure that your vote will count on election day. Even things like a ride to the polls or something like that, you can call that hotline and, and we have uh, connections to, to help you with that process. Okay. Um, I think someone else wants to say, or to, to take this part, and then I have one more thing to, to talk about when it comes to Western voters. Um, did you, I can go over this part, or do you want to go over this? Okay, yeah, I can do it. So, okay, there are resources that um, are available for, fo for the folks that were affected by um, the storm that just happened, especially uh, that hit Western North Carolina. So, you can go to NC. This, this is the link to the state board of elections or so ncsbe.gov slash Helen to get information about uh, people impacted by the hurricane. Or again, you can go to ncvoter.org and you can look up uh, natural disaster and you'll get information about uh, that for voters that have been impacted by the hurricane. Uh, and in the next slide, we are gonna talk about, so there's some things that recently, recent developments around Western North Carolina and the storm. So the state the, earlier this week, the State Board of Elections have made, have approved changes uh, or or have approved the flexibility for county boards of elections in the West. So just a little bit of background: the county boards of elections decide things like polling places, early voting hours, uh, and, and that kind of thing. So. The State Board of Election, and all of that has already been decided before the storm. Well, earlier this week, because of the storm, this, the State Board of Elections have given these county boards the ability to change their previous plans to make it easier for people to vote or to, to just change polling places and that kind of thing because of the storms. So some of the changes that now county boards can do is they can now modify their approved early voting sites, their days, their hours through a, a bipartisan majority vote. So they can say, hey, we're gonna change the places where people vote in the county because maybe some places got damaged or whatever. And they also can change the hours. There's already been a county that I just heard today that has made some of these changes, again, to help people to, to vote. They also can modify election day polling places. So they can actually even open up a polling place in another county if that would be helpful to the people in, in that area. So again, they have the power to, to change things. They also can set up their Board of Elections office to permit any voter in the county to vote at that site. So again, uh, they've been given some flexibility to help people to be able to vote. And we have some uh, changes around absentee voting that, uh, or I guess you should say some flexibility that has been approved for these county boards of elections. So now, they uh, are able to allow voters to request and receive an absentee ballot in person at their county boards of elections up until November the, the 4th. So that's actually a change from uh, what I was just showing earlier. So you can get that uh, later because th this is just for those counties in the West. Uh, it also allows voters to drop off completed absentee ballots at uh, at election day polling places. So they can actually take their absentee ballot and take it to uh, polling place on election day. And now they also can allow voters to hand deliver completed absentee ballots to another county's board of elections in North Carolina. Again, this is what a county board can approve. So this is not just everyone in the West, each of the individual county boards of elections can make, they have now the flexibility to make these decisions on a case by case local basis. So we will continue to have updates about this issue, the state um, General Assembly, the North Carolina General Assembly is needing today to, to make more changes to help people in the West. So again, we will 
uh, send out a link and, uh, at the end of this uh, webinar. You can, we're going to be able to keep you in the loop about changes to election law happening uh, in the west of the, the state. Thank you so much, Marcus. Um, yeah, and we'll definitely include any links to places where you can get updates in an email that we'll be sending following this uh, presentation. We'll also be including the slides and a link to the recording of this session. So if um, you missed anything or anything like that, you'll have access to it later. So now we are going to actually take an action. So let's um, uh, get ready. I hope you are, are not trying to multitask today. And I'm going to turn it over to Celine to go through uh, how to make a voting plan for yourself. Thank you, Mel. Hi, everyone. Uh, and yes, as Mel said, we're going to be creating our voting plan. Um, since I know like a lot of things are happening, you know, we all have busy schedules, but I think this is a perfect time to at least jot down some ideas for, you know, locations, dates, um, for y'all to act on. And so with that being said, um, the first point that I want y'all to do is, you know, check your voter registration if you haven't already done so um, to make sure that all the information is up to date, your address, um, anything like phone number, whatever, but to check that all of that is up to date. And if so, then the second step would be to find your county's early voting locations. Um, and on we have a link that will be dropped in the chat as well. That'll give you a list of those locations as well as a time. Uh, and when thinking about, you know, choosing and deciding, you know, your date and the location, think about which voting sites are the most convenient for you to get to during your normal course of the week. Um, for instance, are there any voting spots that are near a grocery store that you always go to, you know, throughout your week? Or if you have kids, is there one near your children's schools? Um, so, yeah, just those are some questions to take into consideration when creating your voting plan. And here um, we also kind of had a little template for you to follow as well, just so you can, you know, stay committed to this action of, again, planning out your voting um, location, your date, you know, whenever it is that it's convenient for you to do so. And with that being said, um, again, once you thought about your location and what's convenient for you, look at your schedule for the next few days. Pick a time when you can get there during their hours of operation. Again, um, in counties with multiple early voting sites, hours may vary. So, you know, just double check uh, with those spots and add it to your calendar. You know, again, stay committed to this task uh, because it's really important. And with that being said, I think we're going to open up, I guess, five minutes for you all to just think through um, your voting location and like the information and also answer some questions regarding this topic right now. Great. So while y'all are working on your plan and um, checking out your registration status and your day of voting location using the link we put in there and looking up your early voting location, we have a question in here. Um, and I'll throw this out to anybody who knows the answer. And if we don't have an answer, we can um, look some stuff up and, and get you an answer. So where can we find information about volunteering to help the folks in the mountains to vote? So the last guidance that I had on that, and this again is an evolving um, situation. The last guidance that I had on that was last week, and they were really asking people not to travel to the to the mountains at all until they um, have more infrastructure in place. And so they were asking if you want to help. There are charities where you can send money and that kind of thing. And there are um, sites that I, I we can uh, send you the links where people are collecting money. I mean, uh, goods and things to, like water and this kind of thing that that is going to be sent to the West um, by approved methods. But um, but as far as volunteering, I, I don't know where um, uh, information about that as of yet. Now, again, this is an updating situation, so I can check and see if they are now requesting volunteers or if that is something that's happening now. But uh, the last the last thing I got on, they were saying, send things, but don't don't go yourself. But again, if that's changed, I, I, I will be happy to let you know. Um, 
we um, also, uh, Celine, I don't know if you want to share a little bit. We're we're going to talk to uh, y'all a little bit about this at the end of the the this session, but we're going to have a text banking next week, where um, we have separate lists for folks in the West and 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 others, and we'll be sharing some information. Um, we'll asking y'all to help us share information with voters about um, how to vote and what they need to know. And we should have some more information after today about um, what we need to share with those in the West. So we can share links to, you know, how to find where they go to vote, things like that. So um, yeah, we, we'll talk a little bit more about that, that at the end of this ep uh, episode, <laughs> this, uh, this session. Um, we have another question in here. Uh, for victims of Helene who have moved away from the area affected, what are their instructions for voting? Yeah, so for those that have moved away, um, I'm not sure. So you could always vote absentee, um, uh, or th those folks could can vote absentee now, so they could, um, they do have time to uh, request a ballot. The question is if if the mail would, would get there in time, but that would be like the, the, the off the top of my head. As I said, they've just made changes to the um, to give county boards of elections some leeway. So a possibility is that a person, um, a county could, with the new powers that they have, someone in say Buncombe County, they, the county board of elections could say, well, if you um, are displaced, you can. Uh, vote at a neighboring county that hasn't been affected. That that's some of the um, flexibility that they've been given now. And again, there there's more to come. So, and but that is going to be again a county by county basis. So, I just saw some information. I don't know what county it was that they changed their their days to give more Saturdays and that kind of thing. So it's it's a very fluid um, situation. And so the more we the more information we get, the more we can say. But right now the counties have flexibility to make special provisions for people in the West to say vote outside of their county. Thanks. So folks who are working on their voting plan, let's let's hear in the chat. Have you have you got one in place? Do you need a couple more minutes? Uh, and Portia says, I know people who have moved out of state. What do they do to vote? Yeah, they will have, I would say they will have to vote by mail would be probably the uh, the best thing. Anyway, anybody that moves out of state actually has the ability to um, to vote by mail. And so that's that's probably going to be the provision for, for someone like that. And, um, and just the only concern would be the mail getting it back to to that state board of elections. But I think right now that would be my um, my suggestion to someone that's actually out of the state because of the storm. Yeah, and I put in the chat again the ncsbe.gov/helene um link, and that's something you can share with anybody you know who is um, been affected by Helene. And that's the state board of elections, um, and they'll have updates and everything on there. And and there's a bunch of questions, like fact frequently asked questions and things like that on there as well. And that might be helpful as things update um, to share with your friends and, and family. And I see we have a few people in here who have made a plan. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move us along. I hope all of you. Um, uh, continue to make a plan, help your family, your friends make a plan, make sure the folks around you who may have trouble getting to a voting site have a plan. And um, if you can help them with that, that would be great. Um, we want to make sure everybody has their the right, their uh, opportunity to, to uh, use their right to vote this election season. So now we are going to move on to looking at some of our election guides. So um, we have... Um, from uh, Democracy NC, they have a voting guide that they are going to uh, go over a little bit with us and tell us what's in these. Yeah, thank you. So, right, we have um, done some some different things with our voting guide this year. So, typically, the way a voting guide works is you ask the um, you have a list of questions and you try to get in touch with the candidates and get them to answer your questions, and then you publish those in the voter guide. However. Uh, one of the drawbacks of that method is that sometimes it's pretty hard to get candidates to um, 
to fill out the, the forms and to reply to, to answer the questions that, that we ask. So um, we have partnered with, uh, I believe, Ballot Builder this year and a coalition of organizations have come together to help make this voter guide possible. And so the way this works is uh, around many of the topics that would be of a concern to North Carolinians, we have um, uh, a firm has looked at what the all the candidates have said on that issue on their own websites, in press statements, uh, any kind of public information, what has the candidate said about this issue. And we have just basically put that in the form of a guide where you can see all of the things that they have, have said. So instead of us asking a question per se, we just have the different issues and the things that people have said about that issue per candidate. So um, this is a, a copy of the physical voter guide, uh, the front page of it, where you can see um, people's faces and, and a little bit of information there. But all the voter guides have this QR code where it links to our digital version where you can get the whole expansive uh, list of the comments they have made on any particular topics. And of course, all the candidates, it also customizes to your particular um, to your ballot. So you put in your information where you are, and then you you can get information about the people who will be on your ballot and what and what we have, uh, what information we have about them regarding the issues that we care about. So it's a pretty, um, we're pretty excited to um, release this to the public and to help the people, help people to know um, where the candidates stand on uh, issues that North Carolinians care about. So that's our voter guide again. Uh, so you can just click on the link uh, and even if you don't have, you won't have the physical copy, but you can get all the information digitally. Thanks, Marcus. Um, and I put the links in the chat as well for both of those. Um, and also just a reminder, these are nonpartisan voting guides. So, and this is a nonpartisan space. So this really is um, uh, the sort of thing that lets you know about all of the candidates. So um, now I'm gonna turn this over to Heba, who's gonna look at, uh, take, take you through a little bit about our election guide that we put together about some of the policies that are critical for the folks in North Carolina. Thanks, Mal. So uh, thank you for being with us, everyone. It's it's great to be here with you. Um, we are really excited here at BTC to present to you our election guide. And while uh, the election guide just described to you is focused on candidates, this is focused on issues, um, specifically issues of economic well-being in North Carolina. So just to give you a little bit of context, more than 1.3 million North Carolinians live below the poverty line. And we know from pandemic response efforts that provided really historic amounts of aid to folks and the way that that aid um, resulted in a, uh, a historic reduction in the supplemental poverty level, we understand from that experience that poverty is really a policy choice and we don't have to live like this. Lawmakers can pursue policies that deliver opportunities for economic mobility in our state, but that means choosing our communities over corporations. And uh, if you'll go to the next slide, Mel. I'll talk about uh, a little bit about what's in the guide. Um, that means rewriting the rules so that everyone, including the wealthy and corporations, pay what they owe in taxes so that we have the revenue that we need to fund the programs and services that deliver that um, access to opportunity. So think things like public education, environmental resilience, and uh, quality early childhood education. So the budget goes into more detail than I, or uh, excuse me, the guide goes into more detail than I can hear about the specific changes we'd like to see to the tax code in our state and touches on also some federal tax issues and also the state budget process and the intricacies of that process and the changes that we'd like to see that um, really would mean um, greater access to economic opportunity for the people in our state. The guide also gives 
information and historical context on how uh, more than a decade of tax cuts in our state have disproportionately benefited the wealthy and profitable corporations, of course, at the expense of more vulnerable communities and those crucial programs and services that I mentioned. And also the guide gives specific information on policies that offer a better way and also uh, what, what folks can um, understand and questions to ask to understand where candidates stand on these issues. So we have, um, I believe we have a QR code for y'all to access a digital version of the guide. And I think we're giving a link, Mel uh, posted a link to the guide, but also, um, if y'all are interested in having hard paper copies of the guide, um, we Mel has a link to share so that you can request those printed copies of the guide for your um, events and your communities. Thank you, Heba. Yes, we'll be sharing a link in the follow-up email where you can request um, a number of these guides. Um, to share at all any events or your church or wherever it is that you think that uh, folks need to have this guide, um, will you just fill out this uh, the information on the link we're going to share in that email, and we'll get you we'll mail you some copies so you can help us distribute this around the state. Um, and yes, uh, Katarina just shared in our chat. We can also uh, we have a bunch of posts and things in our our social media, and please share it on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, slash X, um, and and get it to the folks that you know um, who need this information. With that, um, we have one more action for you to take, but before we go there, I would like to open up the floor to any questions about anything you've heard so far um, about any of the voting rules, accessibilities, how to make a plan, anything you've heard today so far. Um, please let us know uh, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. You can um, see, I see uh, Wanda, I'm gonna allow you, you have a question, you have your hand raised. And uh, so Wanda, if you wanna ask your question. Yes, um, can you hear me? Yes. I just wanted to, um, uh, um put forth the urgency um of making sure that um people understand that 400,000 or more names were removed from the uh registry voter registration registry and I thank you all for putting the link in there for us to check but also stress to others family friends neighbors Many people are assuming that they are there, but they I I I was removed. I was inactive. This is the second time they have removed me. So please, I just want people not to assume now four hundred thousand is a great number, and just stress to family members, friends, just to check. Just you know, it takes no time, and let people know that this is a real thing. And that's, I just wanted to say that because if it happened to me, it can happen to anybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for raising that and um, making sure that everybody knows that that's a, that's a real issue. It's important. Marcus, do you have anything to add to that or? Yeah. Hi, Juan. It's good to hear your voice. Um, yeah, no, she, she's exactly right. And I, I, I say, I talk about this, um, session that I had in Charlotte. I was at a coalition meeting recently. And again, a very involved mother, mother who, um, you know, comes to meetings and, and, and stuff and is very informed. And, had her, and so was her daughter, a college student. And again, when the daughter went to go vote, she wasn't um, um, on the, for whatever reason, uh, what, what they weren't able to find her name on the, uh, the ballot or on the rolls. And so she was able to register um, you know, same day registration and, and vote. But uh, as just as, as Wanda said, it, it can happen to you. So always check your registration, make sure it's up to date uh, for this election. Yeah, because because you just don't know. And again, we don't want to 
um, scare people, but we want people to be um, ready, <laughs> ready. You know, we want people to be vigilant. It's not about being afraid. Just be vigilant. Check your registration. Make sure everything's in, in order uh, because because she's right that mistakes can happen. And um, and so you just want to make sure it's good, you're good to go. Thank you. Glendora, um, you had a question. I see your hand raised. Okay. All right. Um, if you, I, I can't hear you. So if you have a question, if you could put it in the chat. Um, and I see, uh, I see Christopher um, Alexandra is put her email in the chat for you to connect on affordable housing issues. Um, Portia has the question, how is this information being disseminated to the on-site victims of Helene? Are there people on site who are making sure people know they can still vote and how to do it? So I guess my question would be, when you say on site, I'm not sure. Um, are you saying like at the early voting sites or, or in the community? Because there, I would say there are people in the community that as soon as the information um, is, as soon as decisions are made, there are people who are still there that, you know, live there that are trying to make sure that people know in, in, in those communities. And that's part of the work that's being done now is to make sure that, you know, we get accurate information from the State Board of Elections and then, you know, get it get it to our folks that are still on the ground that are able to, to move and to make sure that people know. So um, so that is the, that's what we're doing. Um, I know the state, the, the boards of elections there are going to have to have a plan to get the information out. And of course, you know, you have the standard stuff like emails and that kind of thing. But where you have people without power or without certain services, it, it can be a challenge. And so there are plans are being made now to make sure that as these uh, provisions uh, are are made, that people know about them. Um, yeah, I mentioned uh, Beloved and, you know, and FEMA is there as well, right? So again, the people that are on the ground there as, as these developments uh, come up, they are charged with making sure the people there know. Right. Yeah, and I believe some of the stuff that they're voting on this afternoon, there was some stuff in the language around um, making sure that they hand out information at shelters and different places like that. Um, Alexandra, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Um, no, I think that it, I think that's helpful. I also just wanted, I guess I could just add that I think in this near term, we're still, you know, within a week, uh, two weeks after the event itself, and there's still a tremendous amount of rescue um, and immediate relief work happening. And so I think insofar as this information is integrated into the other efforts to make sure people have food, are housed, and have safe drinking water, um, I think, you know, that's there is going to be an ongoing effort to get as much information out. And again, to the point in the chat, making sure that trusted organizations um, are there to provide good information is going to be critical. Thanks, Alexandra. All right. Um, if y'all have any other questions um, that come up after this, um, feel free to reach out to us um, at info at ncbudget.org. Um, and we'll make sure you get the answers that you need. Um, we'll put you in touch with uh, Marcus or others who are doing this work. And um, yeah, we, we know what it's, it's very important to make sure that everybody has the information they need to, to vote, especially those in the affected areas. Um, I'm going to um, turn it over now to Celine, who is going to take us through an action. Um, so get out your cell phones because we're going to show you how to do a little bit of text banking with us. Thank you, Mel. Uh, yes, everyone. So I have another uh, action for you all to follow up on. Here we have a QR code that uh, allows you to download our Empower app. And this app is what we're using to reach out to our community members, our contacts, and share our voter guide information with them. So if you could please just scan the QR code if you're able to. We also have a link uh, that is joinempower.app slash ncbtc and that would also direct you to download that app on your phone 
Uh, but if you are on your computer, it will direct you to our website. However, it is a little uh, funky uh, because it doesn't have the same features necessarily as it would on the phone. So I would highly recommend you all to download this on your phone uh, just so it could be more easier um, and accessible, okay? So uh, in the process of downloading the app, uh, once you get it to download, it should also be a, the app icon should be purple with like, uh, kind of like a circular symbol in it. So it should be a purple app icon that you should see uh, when you download the app. And once you download it, you're going to be able to open it um, and register uh, yourself like with your contact information. So it's going to ask for your name um, and your phone number. And then from there, you should see a share the NC budget and tax voter guide in big bold letters and then right under that should be a purple button that reads reach out okay so again if anyone has questions or any issues put it in the chat um, and as Mel said give us a thumbs up in the chat when you've downloaded the app and I can also drop in um, the name of the app as well if you're having a hard time with the QR code. Um, but yes. And then, yeah, we can just give uh, folks a few minutes to get that set up. Celine, do you want to give us a quick um, idea of what relational organizing is or how this app's going to be used while folks are downloading it? Oh, yeah. So Empower, we're using it to, yeah, do relational organizing, as Mel mentioned. And relational organizing is basically just reaching out to your friends, family members, uh, community members um, from your own network. And yeah, sending out the information, letting them know about you know, X, Y, and Z. In this case, we want to let them know about our voter guides um, and, you know, making that accessible to them. And so that's a little bit of relational organizing. It's pretty simple. It's just sharing it out to your networks. Um, and through the Empower app, it'll help us uh, to be able to see how many folks we are reaching out to um, because we have a goal in mind as well. And the more people that we get, uh, you know, to share this resource out, we'll be able to see like, okay, you know, is this hitting the goal that we have? Are people actually accessing the link or the voter guide? Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about the Empower app and how we're using it. All right, we're going to move on so we can go ahead and show you how the rest of this works. But what we're also going to do is we'll include in the email um, that we send out afterwards, um, the links to the voter guides and, mm -hmm. um, and encourage, we encourage you to, to use those links and share them with your friends and your family. You don't have to use our app to do that. Um, I see. And yeah, Porsche's on the phone. So if you want to go back and, and look at this later, then it'll show you as well how to do it, but, um, we'll share that and we'll share the link. I, like I said, for you to get, um, paper copies of this as well to share. So really the, the action is about sharing the um, information with your friends and family. So um, that's the most important part. <laughs> but we are gonna show you the next part of the app and then um, move on to some next steps real quick. Yes, thank you, Mel. And yes, once you have uh, all of that set up, the app is downloaded and whatnot, um, on the first and second screen, after you click that reach out button, that it, it's purple, um, it's going to give you the information of why we're sharing our voter guide and a few instructions as to how you can go about in sharing it. Um, and then once you read over that, you can click next, and then it should automatically um, lead you to the contact list from which you can add from your personal like contact um, phone book. And so there, we're asking you all to at least reach out to five people um, in your contact list. And from there, uh, you should be 
be able to add those five contacts and their phone number should already be um, uploaded since Empower will connect to that phone book with the people that you um, add onto the app. Okay, so again, at the end of the day, it's you're adding those five people in and those are the only five people that will be on the Empower app. It's not going to have access to any of your other contacts. Um, so just want to emphasize that. But yes, after you add those five contacts, then you're able to click each of the names. Um, and when you click each name, the phone number will pop up at the in the center top and you'll be able to have like an icon will show up that's a message icon and you can click that. And once you click that, our automated script is gonna come up with the link to the voter guide. And from there, you can just click send out. Okay, so you don't have to, you know, um, write a new message unless you want to, but everything is already scripted. We have the link and everything in that script. So you can just, you know, click send to those five contacts. And from there, you've all, you know, you've already done the action to share that voter guide. However, if you have more than five people that you know that you think would benefit from the voter guide and would also be down to share that out to others as well, please feel free to add those people on there um, and yeah, send out those messages. But that's basically the gist of Empower app and how we're using it. Um, so yes, hopefully that works out. Again, if you have any questions or any problems come up, you can always reach out to us um, and we can help you as well. Great, thank you, Celine. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're gonna take our last few minutes and go over um, a few next steps for y'all. Do you wanna take this? Yeah, of course. So again, with Empower, like I really encourage y'all to reach out to people. If you have more than five contacts, that would be amazing. Um, please send out those voter guides and share it out. We'll also be having an action hour coming up. Um, I believe it's this Friday mm -hmm. and if you, again, this is all of this information is going to be in our um, email follow-up. So you'll be able to have the times, dates, and the links to register on there. Um, and we'll also be hosting our text bank next week on Tuesday. And we'll have two sessions for that, one during the day and one during the evening. So if you're able to join us um, at either time or both, please, that would be really um, helpful for us. And then we have our evaluation form. In here, we also have a QR code displayed. Um, but yes, if you could please fill out this evaluation form to help us, you know, be better um, with the programming. And yes, and that's it on my end. Thank you so much. And like uh, Celine said, all of these links and everything, all this information will be in the follow-up email you'll receive, hopefully this afternoon, but certainly by tomorrow morning. Um, and you'll be able to register for our text banking, which like I said, we'll be reaching out to some folks in Western North Carolina to make sure they have what they need to vote, as well as folks in the rest of the state and showing, um, sending out policy guides and, and all kinds of other election information. And, and we were hoping to hit over 200,000 people so could, we could really use some help. Um, so uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you to the panelists. Thank you to our translators. We really appreciate all of you. And we really appreciate all of y'all who took an hour out of your day to day to come here and, and learn more about the election and what we can do to make sure everybody has the opportunity to vote today or to, to vote in the future. <laughs> um, so um, we'll be, and, and you'll get a, a recording of this that you can share with whomever you want. So please share far and wide with folks in North Carolina and have a great rest of the day. Bye y'all. <laughs>